I had my next guest on to talk about how he niched his business, but he's also an SEO expert. So I asked him to come back and talk about SEO, search engine optimization. And if you have a website, you're gonna to wanna to hear this. Welcome to another episode of the Wedding Business Solutions Podcast. I'm your host, Alan Berg, speaker, author, sales trainer, website reviewer, here to help you and your wedding and event business sell more, profit more, and have more fun doing it. Enjoy this episode. Welcome back to another episode of the Wedding Business Solutions Podcast. I have a repeat guest, Matt Campbell from MyWeddingSongs.com. Matt, how are you doing again? I'm great, Alan. How are you? I, I am. I am well, thank you. You know, we were talking about niching your business as you have, and we kept getting sidetracked because a big part of your business is SEO, search engine optimization, and you have become an expert in that. You helped me with my website, and we, we kept getting sidetracked. I'm like, you know what? We need to come and talk about SEO, just SEO, search engine optimization, and get people to understand what they maybe do need to know and what they don't need to know, what they need to not worry about. So sure. give us the quick thing. What is SEO? SEO is the process of getting more visibility in search results. So, and, go go, yeah. Uh, so the whole idea, and I said this on the last episode, if you're looking to get traffic from search engines, Google, Bing, are there any other ones they should care about besides Google and Bing? I, it really depends. So Bing's, you know, Bing has an older generation that uses the platform, but mm -hmm. you know, 90% of our traffic's from Google. So Google. I, I would okay. even narrow it down to Google. Right. So it's so a Google. If you're looking to get traffic to your website from Google, search engine optimization can help you come up higher in the results. That's what it is. Yes. If you're filling your calendar with traffic that's already coming from other sources, uh, the not Wedding Wire, we have people listening from around the world. So uh, Easy Weddings in Australia, Weddings Online in, in Ireland or Dubai or India or Guides for Brides in the UK. If you're getting traffic from any source like that and you're filling your calendar, then you don't really have to worry about SEO, right? No, but I would at least do the basics. So okay. a caveat would be uh, if people are researching you before they hire you, I would still create that Google My Business, which is a, a side a side note to Google, but you would at least want to create your profile, have everything filled out. So that way, if somebody Googles your business, that information's there. Right. And our friend, mutual friend, Brian Lawrence is great with Google My Business. Um, I actually got an email from them yesterday and it said, hey, you have no reviews. And I don't, again, I don't get business. When people go to Google, they're looking for Alan Burke, right? They're not mm -hmm. looking for somebody like me. Um, which is what I'm looking for. But I wanted to have that presence. So I have Google My Business. My photos are there. My, my book covers are there. And they said, hey, you don't have any reviews. So I actually sent an email out to a small group, not my whole mm -hmm. list, and said, hey, could you do me a favor? Google said I should have at least five reviews. Could you be one of my five? Uh, last time I looked, I had 14. <laughs> so awesome. All of a sudden, all <laughs> of a sudden. Now, they all came in at once, which I heard may not be Right. Great, but I guess it's better than zero, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I did reply to every one of them, awesome. which I, is also. Now, does that make a difference to, to Google? Yes. So I, I even tell people you want to respond within 24 to 48 hours, but let's say you're in the wedding industry. I i don't know the, your um, uh, space very well, but let's say you're in the wedding industry, a venue or a DJ or, or whatnot. You want to respond with keywords that potential customers would be using. So you would want to reply with where's what what the venue is, what the city is, maybe the state. Mm -hmm. You would put in there, um, you know, maybe the area. You know, put in those keywords inside of that answer. Say, and, and then you want to really make it unique. So you would say something like, "Hey, uh, uh, Teresa and Mike, thanks for having me part of your wedding. That was at." uh emerald gardens in las vegas nevada you know you're getting those those keywords in there and then per also personalizing it to that couple right you don't want to just copy paste the same review uh, and Correct. the re same response uh, i personally post on yelp and TripAdvisor when i travel which wasn't so much in the last 18 months but <laughs> will will become again i've started to post again and i post a very specific review one that i would want to read 
And I love when people respond and I hate when it's this canned copy pasted response, which I know they gave to everybody. I mean, it's, you mm -hmm. know, that's the one. Now, I appreciate that they responded, but I actually almost wish they wouldn't because right. it, they didn't even read what I wrote. Um, mm -hmm. And if you're on Wedding Wire, the not sites that have reviews like that where you're allowed to reply, reply to them. Don't wait for a bad one to reply. Reply to the good ones. Right. Um, so search engine optimization is mm -hmm. somebody's going to a search engine, they're typing in a word or they're typing in a phrase, they're looking for someone that does something right. like what you do. Mm -hmm. Now, if they're looking for you, mm -hmm. you have to write your name on your website. You have to write your business name on your website because I get people that tell me, I Google myself and the knot comes up or wedding wire comes up and then I go to their website and their name is in a logo, which is a picture. Mm -hmm. and it's hardly written anywhere else on their website. I was like, well, you didn't even write your name like in text. Right. So what are some other things that are kind of these low hanging fruit, obvious things, like you said, the, the must haves there? What, what do people need to do? So the first thing is always the titles and meta descriptions, because that's when somebody Googles whatever they're searching for, that's what shows up in the search results. So you want to make sure that I always say three things that need to be included in each. And number one is the keyword phrase you're trying to get that page to rank for, a benefit to the reader. And if you have enough room in the title, you should have enough room in the description, is a call to action. And the call to action could be a single word. So call, text, visit, you know, what, it, just something to give them something to do. Okay. And the meta description, w people who are maybe not so technical, where does that go? Where do you enter that? So on the back end, hopefully, depending on your platform, uh, no matter if you're on Wix or on Squarespace or, or WordPress, there should be some place to enter the page title and the page description inside of the, the back end of the website. And the page title shows up where? Besides shows, that Google search, where else would, would it be seen? On that. So in each individual page should have a section for the title and the description. Right. And the title is, is that the address of the page or is that something else? Oh, I see what you're saying. So the, the address would be considered the slug. We're getting a little technical. Okay. <laughs> but uh, So, so allenberg.com slash speaking, right? right? That's the slug. Correct. Okay? And then the title... Then, then the title could be something like uh, um, speaking wedding business speaking expert, Alan, uh, call Allenberg. You know, we're just doing this on the fly. <laughs> That's all right. Well, I, I'm actually, while you're, while you're thinking about that, I'm going to pull up my page <laughs> okay. and I'm going to actually look and see. So if I hover here, if I hover over that little tab on the, on the, in the, in the, um, the browser, Correct. Top speaker and industry expert, Alan Berg's key wedding. And then it goes dot, 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 because it's longer than that. <laughs> so, Correct. Yep. So, you only get 60 characters. Okay. So that was the title that I think you probably came up with, Brian, when you guys threw it, went through my site. Right. So the page is allenberg.com slash speaking, but that whole description comes there. So if you Google Alan Berg speaker, Correct. that's what's going to show up in the Google results? Correct. Yep. Okay. All right. And, and I... I I would start with that as as well. Start Google, with the Google to see what other people are, the the terms that they're using, what they're saying, because you don't want to say the exact same thing. Right. You want to stand out from everybody else. So right. I would start with the Google, and and we're 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 also saying okay, we're going to create all of this search engine optimization. We're going to do all of this work. We also have to set expectations. So if you Google let's say um, New York City wedding venues and the top position is Yelp. Then you have Wedding Wire. Then you have The Knot. Then you have uh, Brides or whoever else. You have to put it all in, into perspective that the chances of you overthrowing them are pretty slim. <laughs> so let's right. put your expectations correct that you're not going to be number one. I'm, I'm sorry. Right. Like right. And somebody else is trying to knock you off, even if you were number one or number five or whatever. It's a moving target all Correct. the time. But uh, we, we touched on this on the last episode where, but you could own 
your local area of a particular name. So I live in central New Jersey, right? I live outside of Princeton. So if you have a wedding venue in Princeton, you could come up really high under Princeton wedding venue because it's really hard for sites like The Knot and Wedding Wire to get that micro. Um, right. And I've often said this with like local, uh, there's a guy here in New Jersey, Eric Kent, njwedding.com. I've mm -hmm. known Eric for a long time. Uh, Eric can own a lot of things that the Knot and Wedding Wire can't because he can be hyper local. Right. And it's that hyper uh, specificity where mm -hmm. somebody could win. This is called the long tail again of, of, of search, which you mentioned on the last one, these very specific terms. So if in that title, should they be putting things like location words, like cities and towns and things like that? Yes, that would be part of your targeted keywords, uh, your location. It's going to be extremely important to use. But, you know, that goes back to the the keyword research. You know, as an example, the area in Las Vegas could be Summerlin, but maybe nobody's searching for Summerlin wedding venues. Right. You know, why optimize for something that nobody's really searching for? But in that same token, maybe 25 people search for that a month and potentially you could get all of 25 people looking for a wedding venue in Summerlin. So let's right. put that into, into perspective as well. Right. And that's what the long tail is, is saying, you know what, let the big boys fight it out over the big words, but let me own these so that those very specific people looking for this, whatever those phrases are, which doesn't have to be towns. It could be something else, you know, that what you do. So if you do South Asian weddings, you can, mm -hmm. you know, maybe own something like that or specific words in there talking about the Mondop and the Barat and whatever, you know, best wedding Barat DJ, you know, Correct. that's a very specific term. And other people aren't beating over, you know, beating the doors down to try to get that. So you could get, you know, those searches if somebody's that specific. But let's talk about keyword research. Mm -hmm. How does someone go about deciding what are the words and phrases that I might do? I know Google has a tool for that, the keyword tool. Um, mm -hmm. but, and then there's also other ways to do it. So where would you say people should start? Because we all get these emails every day. I can put you page one on Google. Yeah, on a phrase that nobody ever uses, you can put me page one on Google. Right. So um, the, the what where should people go and what do they do? So the first place to start is, you know, like you mentioned, in, inside of Google Ads is the Google Keyword Planner. And they will give you stats on the number of searches that people are are using per month. The caveat to that is you have to be a paid advertiser within Google ads to get the exact numbers. So maybe you just spend a small amount of money and then you can have access to that. Another tool that I really like is Uber suggest that's owned by Neil Patel. And now that's becoming part of a, a paid feature as well. But those are two searches um, or two tools that I'll use to do keyword research just to find out what people are actually searching for. And, and to go off of that as well, when you're optimizing a page, just keep the same theme per page. So if you are targeting Princeton wedding venue, that is what that page is about. Don't bring in other cities within that, have other cities be their own individual pages as well. So if you work in a larger geographic area, but you focus on certain ones or wanna focus on certain ones, you could have separate pages. It sounds redundant, but if you have, so again, here I have Princeton is near me, but then uh, I'm in Kendall Park. So if I did a Kendall Park page and a Princeton page, even though the content is very, very similar, these are the pages that if somebody Googles, I'm looking for a venue in Kendall Park or, or a photographer in Kendall Park or whatever, that page could rank higher because it's so specific to that as opposed to being diluted with all these other ones. The, the, the old days, right? The, the 15, 20 years ago where you would list every city at the bottom of the page in text that was yeah. just slightly different color than the page, right? right? right. That's actually bad now, right? Keyword yes, stuffing. very bad. Very Ooh. bad. You, you know, uh, t t last year or the year before, there was over 3,600 Google algorithm updates within a year. So yes, they are very smart at what they do and they are getting better. And so, you know, you say slightly different. I would challenge you to be as different as possible. So in Princeton versus Kendall Park, maybe you are saying 
things to do in the area, things to see in the area, where to stay, what's the weather in all four seasons. Maybe it's different between the two, you know, figure out what makes each one unique. And this is where the locals perspective that somebody that's in a different area will never know, you know, where's the best place for DJs to set up, you know, make each one unique because that's what's going to get you to rank. So let's say you are a, a florist or a photographer and you did a page for Princeton, you could right. talk about all the different venues that you work at in Princeton and what you love about them. Right. Right. And each and then, one could be a, a, a post in itself. Each one could be okay. That, 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 that we're getting even more hyper local there, but right. again, I'm thinking about a florist that I know, uh, Georgianne, if you're listening in Princeton. So there's venues around there. <laughs> and uh, Matt says, hi, uh, if you're, if you're not watching on video, um, she could say, you know, we love working at the Hyatt Regency in, in Princeton. It's got beautiful areas, their ceremony area, this or whatever. Now, should she link to the Hyatt in Princeton and, and have it open up a new site, a new page, or does that not matter? Yes, it does matter. And I absolutely would do that. Now, w w why does that matter? Because you're giving relevancy and a th you're, you're, you're um, not quoting the source, but you're linking this to the source so that way google kind of knows oh okay especially the hyatt regency the number of hyatts that there are out there you're going to link to the exact one and now you're saying at this place this is where i would set up the flowers this is where how i'd set up set up the the aisles and what kind of flower and the type of flowers per season that I would use that would, that would bring your cost down, you know, just really relate what you're talking about to, to that specific menu. So that link, uh, are you getting any halo effect where if their page ranks higher than yours, does it help you to be linking to this busy page? I would link to the, I would just link to the homepage. I wouldn't link to their wedding page. Cause now oh, no, you're no, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I meant, I meant, but the idea of my site gets a certain ranking from Google based upon how many searches and what the content is and all that kind of stuff. But now I'm linking to the Hyatt. Is, is, right. is, is that pulling me up a little bit? Yes. Okay. Now, do I ask the Hyatt to link back to me? <laughs> You can always ask, but you know, corporate, I, I highly doubt that's going to happen. <laughs> no, okay. But so corporate, yes. it might not happen, but you have a local wedding venue. Yes. And let's say you're on the preferred list of that wedding venue. Yes. You definitely want them to link to you. Yes. So if they link to you, does it matter if you link to them? It's less valuable, but you, you're, you're topic specific. It's not like that link's coming from your homepage. Right. I'm trying to think of a good example. So let's say um, you are you are speaking at the MGM Grand, okay. and the MGM Grand, I would it would be more valuable if the MGM Grand did not link to your homepage, mm -hmm. that they would link to your speaking page, and then if that page was talking about speaking at the MGM, because you're talking so about I relevance. So I have an, uh, events on my website and every one of those events has a page. I'd want them to link to that page. And then I should be linking from that page to the homepage of the MGM. So we have it going right. both ways there. Okay, so what would you say uh, for someone who uh, wants to increase the amount of um, traffic that they're getting from search engines? Mm -hmm. What would be your top three things to focus on? Assuming that they've done their mm -hmm. title tags and their meta because we spoke about that already. So assuming they already have that done, what comes next after that? Number one in in any any part of SEO is content, content, content. Okay. What content is on on your site? Okay. You know the the more content that you have, the more authority that Google is going to give to you. And then number two, I'm not even going to give a number three. <laughs> number two <laughs> is links to your site links to your site to your site so okay. a, as an example and and we're 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 talking about authority and relevance that because that's really two different things so you work any business works with specific vendors so if you're a florist maybe you're working with the venue you're working with um Planners. other djs you know other professionals in the wedding industry to get links from them you're already working with them just ask them hey 
especially if they have a page on their site, if you're a florist that talks about flowers yeah. or maybe a specific wedding, if they link back to you, that would be gold, it, especially if it was, you know, what, what do weddings symbolize? I don't know why the DJ would be writing about that, but <laughs> let's say they did. And then they, they linked from that page to you then, Hey, that, 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 that the relevancy is, is gold. You know, let's say you work with a plumber, you know, that's not really relevant. I, I probably would, would skip the plumber. Right. But so but if, the, if people are, some people ask about blogging and if they blog, let's say you or somebody else blogs about a wedding mm -hmm. and then you talk about the other professionals that were involved and link to those professionals, there's a relevance there. Correct. But that link, you know, if it's just a list on the page, here's everybody else here, that's not as strong as if you wrote something about, I love working with, again, I'll use Georgie Ann here. I love working with Georgie Ann at Monday Morning Flowers. She always brings such beautiful flowers as you can see in these photos. That link is stronger than a bullet point list of vendors, right? Exactly. Okay. Perfect. Um, but you don't need seven paragraphs about why you love working with them. You just want to have a more descriptive thing because Google is smart enough to know mm -hmm. that wasn't a bullet point list that you actually mm -hmm. took the time to write something. Right. And the text that you're using to link to that site. I mean, we're getting a little bit technical, but let's mm -hmm. say, let's say they're a Princeton florist, then you could say, you know, here's so and so, and then the actual text link is Princeton wedding florist that links to your site. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's that that's would be, gold too. Right. So if so if the sentence there was like, uh, you know, uh, Georgie Ann from, and then the link is Monday morning flowers, a wedding florist in Princeton. That right. even though that's a bigger link, that's a yeah. stronger link for her right. because she's getting that in in the relevance there again. Okay, mm -hmm. so title tags. Go ahead. I was just going to say, bare minimum, at least I would link the business name to the website. Right. And that, that is the bare minimum. But if you can add a little bit more, you can add a little bit more juice. And now you can tell your friends. Right. So what about people that are on a, a site like Wedding Wire or The Knot or, again, Easy Weddings, Wedding, Weddings Online or whatever? The link from there, so the link from The Knot mm -hmm. to their site, The Knot has to rank a whole lot higher. It's a much bigger site and all that kind of stuff. Is that benefiting that individual business yes yeah, so there's a tool that i'd like to use called the the moz toolbar and what it does is it ranks all sites in authority from zero to 100 so the 100 is going to be facebook google you know high 90s are going to be cnn fox you know mm -hmm. th those types of sites and then it works its way down from there so the not waiting wire is probably around I think last time I looked, it was 82, 82 okay. to 88. So it, it's a very high authority. So those links to your site are very important. So let's say, let's say we've been talking about florists. Let's say 1-800-Flowers writes an article or you can guest post a blog on 1-800-Flowers. That link from that to you, from that blog to you would be, yeah, it would be awesome. Let's just say it. Right. So in other words, what I'm trying to get at is a side benefit of advertising on a site like Wedding Wire or The Knot is that link. Yes. Whether or not anybody clicks on it, the fact that the link is there is is giving you that um, that uh, authority by association. If we Correct. Will. <clears throat> Correct. Okay. Yeah. Right. So that's when people talk about, well, you know, advertising, it's all about direct response. No, no. It's also about seeing your name over and over again. You know, we say you have to see someone seven to 12 times until they become you know, more familiar and they trust you more, but there's also this behind the scenes trust over there. So right. title tags, meta tags. So um, I go to people's sites and, you know, at the top of the page, I, the, the on the tab, I'll see the WordPress logo because they haven't even put in their own favicon. Um, and then, you know, it's mm -hmm. just, the name of the page with nothing else going on there. That's the easy stuff. That's kind of low hanging fruit. Right. Um, what I also tell people is if you go to Google Analytics, which you should have Google Analytics, or if you have analytics at all, it tells you what your most popular pages are. Mm -hmm. So start with the pages that are most popular and work your way down. If you have 50 pages on your site, start with the top 10, right? Mm -hmm. And then Absolutely. work your way down. Um, it's, it's the same as we spoke about responding to reviews. If you've never responded, start with the top five. And then as the new ones come in, you know, if you have more time, go back and respond to others. But the ones from two years ago, 
you don't have to go back respond now. I actually, my tip for that is uh, respond on their anniversary, say, Hey, happy, you know, third anniversary. It was such a pleasure being part of your wedding, you know, nice. Just nice. don't do it seven months. Okay, great. Right. It just makes you look bad. Right. But it, it, and well, you know what? Some of the sites don't notify the customer that you have replied. Uh, Google right. does. Mm -hmm. um, I don't believe Wedding Wire and the Not do. Yelp, mm. I think, does. So, uh, but I'm pretty sure uh, Wedding Wire and the Not, they don't get notified. So if you go back and respond to the first five or eight or whatever, it's not like they're really, oh, like you just came out of the woodwork here, right? right. Uh, that's why on the 14 reviews I got on Google, Google yesterday, because I asked for five and I got 14. Right. Thank you very much, all who did that. Um, you're going to see, I replied. Uh, you said within 24 hours, I replied within minutes. As soon as I saw it came in, I replied personal to each one. I always reply to every review I get where I can. Mm -hmm. I can't reply on Amazon. They don't let me reply. I would, um, but I can't. Um, nobody posts reviews for me pretty much anywhere else. So it's my site, Amazon, or now Google. Um, so title tags, meta tags, um, the, uh, the keywords. And again, Matt, I'll ask you to give me this for the show notes, but the uh, Google Keyword Planner, um, Uber Suggest, uh, Moz Toolbar, you'll give me those links so I can give to people to look there. Yep. And then the, the, the low tech way is if you go and do a search on Google, mm -hmm. It's going to show you what other people are are searching. So you know how it it's it just starts to fill in for you when you start to type stuff. It's doing that based upon what other people have searched, right? Correct. And and since we're talking about Google, let's say we're talking about low tech, you could search with the parameter site colon and then your domain. So it'd be site colon allenberg.com and it'll give you a list of the pages on your site that Google is indexing. And right. you can see right from there what your titles are, what your descriptions are. So if somebody does that and nothing comes up, that means Google is not reading your page? It's not indexing? It's not indexing your site. Yes, and I, I have worked with sites that it was blocking Google from seeing the site, and that's not something that's... No, no. Um, I've been to sites where you couldn't copy and text like you couldn't copy text to paste that in. if you can't copy the text is that being blocked or is that something else there's that there's javascript so there's javascript in there that's blocking you from copying and pasting okay if, if that's a bad thing it. yeah yes i'm not okay. sure if that's a, a i would assume that that's good just because that's been on very high authoritative sites where you could copy that yeah i i guess um but you could specifically block pages uh, for instance, if you have a hidden page with your pricing on it that you only send people a link to, right. you could tell Google, don't read this page, don't index this page. Um, and that's, a, again, a technical thing in the back. In, in things like WordPress, is that like a checkbox, like don't index, or is there someplace else you'd have to go to say, hey, don't read this page? I, I on In WordPress, I use a tool called Yoast SEO. Mm -hmm. It's yep. a, a plugin that you would add to your website. And... It, within that tool, within the page, you can say, no index this page. Right. And you would actually want to use that feature on pages like your thank you page, because you don't want people searching Google and then going to your thank you page. So that's a terrible user experience. Right. But theoretically, that page doesn't have a whole lot of content on it. And right. it, it shouldn't come up high. In a, it, if your thank you page is coming up high in a search, you, your other pages are really bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, yes. I would think your other pages are really bad. So again, what are the pages that you want to come up? And But if I'm thinking more of the hidden page stuff where people right. will get an inquiry and then send someone to pages where they don't want prospects seeing it. Right. Those are called hidden pages. You have to have the link to get there. But if somebody Googled, you know, Allenberg pricing, you know, if I had a page like that, if I don't tell it not to index that page, that hidden page is no longer hidden. And people are going to find that. And yeah. just keep in mind, one of the top things every couple is searching for is pricing and packages. Right. So, so, so I, I was going to end here, but I'm not going to end now because this is a great point. You have to use the words they're looking for. They're not looking for your investment. Mm -hmm. They're looking for pricing. And even if you don't want to put pricing, if you have a pricing page and you said on there, uh, we know that couples like you are looking for pricing for your weddings, for your you know, officiating or whatever it is, and we would love to give you pricing information, uh, blah, 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 or have packages without pricing, but still say pricing and say, 
you know, uh, we'd love to give you a price for your wedding, call, email, contact, whatever. So whether you put the prices or not, saying pricing is going to get people to a page. Um, and I see all the time, you know, investment, investment. I'm like, say the word investment on the page that when you hi hiring the right, uh, you know, wedding photographer is an investment in the future of your photos, but don't call it investment because they're not looking for it, right? Yep, correct. But they are looking for pricing. They are looking <laughs> for packages. And, uh, you know, whether or not you want to put it there, you have to talk about that. All right, I'm going to end us there because, Matt, we could keep talking about this forever. Yes. And I've already had you on twice now, so we'll have to come back for a third and talk more. So but thank you so much. In the show notes, again, myweddingsongs.com is Matt. But, Matt, I'm going to ask you to, you know, just tell me, tell them about Uber Suggest, the Google Keyword Planner, Moz Toolbar, Yoast SEO, you know, just those things. We'll put the links in if you, you know, you want to find out more about those things. And myweddingsongs.com if you want to find out more and connect with Matt. He is a super nice guy and he talks to anybody that asks. And when you get out to Vegas, Wedding MBA or whatever, look him up. You'll you'll be at Wedding MBA, right? Yes, we have a we have a booth. Yes. All right. So come and see him at the booth. Come and see me at my booth. Matt, thank you so much again for joining me. Thanks, Alan, for having me. I really appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Wedding Business Solutions Podcast. Full transcripts of this and every episode are available on my website at allenberg.com. And if you have any questions about anything in this episode or any of the episodes, or you'd like to make a suggestion for a future topic or a guest for one of my dialogue episodes, you can email me directly at allen at weddingbusinesssolutions.com. Uh, please subscribe to this channel, post a review if your platform allows it, and if you don't get email updates of the latest episodes, as well as upcoming workshops and masterclasses that I have, you can join at connectwithallenberg.com. I look forward to seeing you on a future episode. Thanks.